So in this video, we're going to see how we implemented a virtual joystick with React and P5.js, and then we're going to see how we use that joystick within React hooks to move a map behind our player for movement. So stay tuned to know everything. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding tutorials as well as coding challenges just like this one. So if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and dropping a like in the video. So today we're going to continue with the recap of the live series that I'm hosting on my Twitch channel. You can find the link in the description below if you want to make part of the chat in the next stream where we're building an Among Us clone using React.js and P5.js, a creative JavaScript library. And then we use the input of that joystick to move the map behind our player to give a sense of movement. So let's get into what we've done. So this is where we left off with the index page. When we click game on, we have an ellipse going just diagonally from one corner to the other. So I found an example on a code sandbox online using p5.js for rendering and reading the input of a virtual joystick by Coder, and I decided to use this template. So with that example, we created a new folder called classes, and we converted the example using plain JavaScript to now be using a class named joystick. Now, for a little bit of context of what this class is, we can take a look at its constructor. So to construct, it takes an X, a Y, a radius, and the p5 instance that we need. So the p5 instance is just saved within the class to be used for rendering later. The position of the class is where it's positioned on the screen for rendering. The radius is just the radius of the outer circle for rendering. The stick pause is a new vector of x and y that represents where the finger is. The controls is just a boolean to see if the joystick is being controlled or not. And then the value is the input returned from the calculations. To ease our rendering and calculations, we define a constants file just for the joystick. We just need to create it within a folder, name it joystick, and then declare the variables we're going to use. Now, those variables are going to be used within the render function to draw the circles and the stick position. And then the update function is going to be responsible by updating all the values needed with the input from the player. Now, within our main canvas component that holds all of the elements that are being drawn on the screen, we instantiated a new variable called joystick that is of type joystick. On the setup, we create a new instance of that class and pass it some parameters of its position, its radius, and the p5 instance for it to store internally. The next step is within the draw function of our loop, we call joystick render for it to appear on the screen. We can first call joystick update for it to update the values based on input. Then we save this file and we have a really tiny joystick on our screen. So we just go back to VS Code, we tweak the parameters a bit more, in the position, mainly the radius, and then we have the joystick where we would think it belongs. Now going over to this joystick function, we're going to take a look at the update. Now the update function of this joystick is going to save into a variable called finger the x and y positions of the touches on the screen or mouse. It's then going to update the stick position with the difference between the current finger position and the position of the joystick limit that value to a radius divided by two, then update its value variable with the new stick positions, x and y positions, and then update the stick position itself to be the difference between its center and the current position that you read from the finger. That's gonna be used for rendering later. In the end, it's gonna return an object, also with an x and y, that's gonna be the output of this movement. Now, for all of this to work, we need to call the active joystick function that's gonna see if the finger is close to the joystick and activate it for use. Now, to call this function, we first need to add two more parameters to our sketch component within the canvas. We need to add a touch started event and a touch ended event, and each of them are going to activate or deactivate the joystick. This is going to happen once we touch or end the touch of our canvas. Now, if we save and go back to a browser, we can drag the joystick center. At the moment, this does nothing because we are not using the return value of its update function. Now I need to go back to VS Code and within the draw function we're going to save the return of that update to a variable named speed. If you move right you can see that the x value increases, left it is negative, the same for the y values.
Okay, so now starts the fun part. We have a joystick, it moves and returns an input. So now we can move our map. Now to keep things organized, we're gonna create a folder named hooks. And in it, we're gonna separate concerns by domain. So the first hook is called the use game map, where we set functions that we're gonna be needing to use within our canvas component. So we call it setup map, and we know it's gonna use p5 as a parameter because we need to save an instance of that p5 instance to be able to use and render the screen independently of the canvas. So in our canvas component, we can now use that hook, export the setup map function, and then use it to set up all we need within the hook. Now we're gonna pass the logic that we already had on the canvas to load the background and render the background back to our hook for things to be separated. So we're gonna declare a variable called background. It's gonna be of type p5 images. And once we call the setup function, it's gonna load an image into that variable. Then in the render function, just gonna render that image into our canvas, starting at the zero zero position and with the width and height of the total canvas. We're gonna add the render map function to the draw loop and everything should seem exactly as before. Now, we were missing a player, right? So we're gonna do the same thing, but for players. And we're gonna keep things still organized. So we're gonna create a use player hook. We're gonna still use the same function types. It's gonna be set up player to instantiate our player and save the p5 instance, and then a render player just to render it on the screen. We're gonna do the same thing we did for joystick and declare a file for its constants and we're gonna save there the player radius and eventually the player color and everything else we're gonna need. Now we're gonna do the same thing on our canvas component. We're gonna import the user game player hook in its respective functions and we're gonna call them the same way we did before. We're gonna set it up and then we're gonna render it on the screen. So now saving and get it back to our browser we have a player within the middle of the screen. Then we just added a color for it to not be white. Now we used p5 fill helper function to set up the fill color before drawing anything on the screen. That's how it works. So the next step was simple, just to move our map with our input. So like I said, our update of the joystick returns an X and a Y of the value that it has. So we can use that speed to update our map, right? We're gonna pass our speed into the game map hook onto a new function called update map. So within our game map hook, we created a new function called update map, and that one's gonna take the speed in. That's gonna be of type I point, just for everything to be still organized. So we're gonna add that I point interface into a global definitions file, and just gonna say that it has an X and Y in both our numbers. So now we can just type speed dot and they're gonna suggest the types that it has. It's gonna be an X and a Y. We're gonna save those X and Y variables as a global within the hook to be able to update them and then render it based on those variables. So the update map is gonna take the X and Y components of the speed and add them to the X and Y variables of the hook. And then we're gonna still use those X and Y variables to render the map within the P5 image function. So now within our draw, we're gonna call the new function update map with the speed. And we give it a try and it's not working as expected. It's moving, but not the way we want it. So it looks like it's not adding continuously, but just taking the input and moving the X and Y as such. So we went back to the code and we saw that, yeah, we need to instantiate the X and Y variables or else they're gonna be undefined and not gonna be able to add. So now that we have x and y at zero, if we add numbers to them, I think it works smoothly. So now we have a moving player, or let's say a moving map behind our player. So this was a quick recap of what we did in our last two hour stream, where we were able to finally move our player with user input, and we still have a lot to go there. Now we're gonna keep streaming every Wednesday and Saturday until our game is playable by multiple people at the same time, until we are able to kill people and do tasks, or at least try to do so. So if you're interested in being part of this process and this journey and being able to help out with ideas and make suggestions, and you're interested in seeing the rest of the process, 
Uh, the link is in the description below. You can go out to my Twitch channel, see what we've been up to and follow me if you want to be part of this. And I'm going to see you on the next stream or on the next YouTube video that we upload with the recap of the last stream. So until then, happy coding and I'll see you later.